students today we are going to discuss nursed heat theorem now nursed heat theorem explains the behavior of pure solids i mean it holds good in case of the pure solids only now we have we have gibbs helmholtz equation gibbs helmholtz equation so what is gibbs helmholtz equation then delta g minus delta h is equal to t into d delta g by dt at constant pressure so this gives the gibbs helmholtz equation now <coughs> we know very well that at absolute zero at absolute zero temperature that is when t is equal to zero kelvin then delta this entire unit becomes zero thus then uh, delta g and delta h becomes equal i mean when <coughs> temperature is absolute zero that is zero kelvin then delta g that is free energy change and enthalpy change are equal so this gives important generalization and secondly very important thing to be noted that from the emf measurements of the cell so it is concluded from that is the with decrease in temperature d delta g by dt goes on decreasing that is a very important thing so it is very important thing what from emf measurements emf measurements of cell what it is concluded that it is concluded concluded that with decrease with decrease in temperature what d delta g by dt goes on decreasing goes on decreasing and remember at absolute zero of temperature this d delta g by dt becomes zero and remember this is nothing but the nursed heat theorem so what nursed heat theorem tells us that the with decrease of temperature d delta g by dt goes on decreasing and at absolute zero of temperature that is at zero kelvin d delta g by dt approaches to zero i mean it becomes zero and this is what nursed heat theorem is so at absolute zero at absolute zero temperature d delta g by dt approaches approaches to zero and this is this is nursed heat theorem this is nothing but nursed heat theorem now how this generalization can be given in mathematical form so mathematically it is given as what so mathematically mathematically we can write what as temperature decreases then this remember at absolute zero delta g is equal to what delta h so one can write that limit t tends to zero d delta g by dt definitely at constant pressure it becomes equal to what limit t tends to zero d delta h by dt at constant pressure and these two becomes equal to zero if temperature becomes zero now this is supposed to be one and from 
the thermodynamics especially second law so from second law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics we know that what d <coughs> delta g by dt at constant pressure is equal to what minus of delta s now this is supposed to be 2 and another big thing that is d delta h by dt at constant pressure is equal to what delta cp this is supposed to be 3 and remember this is nothing but the kirchhoff's equation i mean the equation which indicates effect of temperature on heat of reaction now from these generalization i mean from equation 1 2 and 3 what interpretation can be made so from equation 1 2 and 3 one can easily write what limit t tends to 0 of delta s is equal to 0 so this means that at absolute 0 i mean as temperature decreases entropy goes on decreasing and at absolute 0 of temperature entropy changes 0 if the solid is extremely pure remember nernst heat theorem holds good in case of pure solids another important generalization which can be given is limit t tends to 0 of delta cp this also becomes equals to 0 so from these two what we can say we can say that with decrease of temperature delta s and delta cp goes on decreasing and at absolute zero these two approaches to zero remember so as temperature decreases delta s and delta cp go on decreasing this is very important thing and at absolute zero at absolute zero temperature delta s and delta cp approaches approaches to zero so this is this forms the basis of third law of thermodynamics so this was the nernst heat theorem which hold good in case of pure solids thank you very much